Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi, let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about the community of law enforcement. You know, this is a topic that's very taboo right now in, the, in, in our society and just what's going on with the news and the media. So I think this is a very important topic that we really need to talk about because people really need to think about this in a different perspective, you know, especially with law enforcement. They have such a bad rep. In reality, in my opinion, they're just another person that just has a job that happens to have more more power than others but it doesn't make that person behind that uniform any different than you and I that's my opinion but I got a special guest here Catherine who's going to be sharing with us with this movement that she's doing Catherine why don't you go ahead and take it away hi thank you so much so I am Catherine um what you said literally just made me tear up because it really hits home and you articulated perfectly kind of my stance on things, um, you know, what I'm creating is essentially a community for police officers, an online community that will allow police officers across the United States and maybe someday the world to connect with one another. Um, but really where this all kind of stemmed from for me is police officers are literally just human beings who have a really unique job that anyone who doesn't participate in that profession, me, you, anyone else, literally cannot understand, um, which in and of itself is isolating. And then you add on some of the intricacies and some of the complexities and um, controversies that can go kind of along with that job. It just makes it that much more isolating. Um, and with, you know, everything that kind of happened during COVID and the shutdown and the riots and everything, I really kind of just got a reality check that these people are are just human beings trying to make a living and support their families. Um, and so I decided to create a community where those people could connect with other people who kind of understood where they're coming from. Yeah, I think that's beautiful what you're doing. because, And I support you 100% with this because mm -hmm. I agree with you. My, my, I was reading up your story and I've seen that most of your family, including your father, were in the police department. So it does hit home with you. And for myself as well, because it was a time where my sister, she was a sheriff, you know, in, in a local um, county by where I live. So I understand exactly where you're coming from, you know, and sometimes even for those people who are in that position, it's so maybe hard for them to turn it off, you know, their work mode when they leave work because it's it it requires so much of their attention and focus that it's no different than a doctor that has to require attention when they do surgery or attention when they have to diagnose people, you know, and things of that nature. So I feel that this is something that people need to consider and realize because mm -hmm. thousands of people are disrespecting the law enforcement and it's just by a bad egg, you know, and there's so many bad eggs in every city and every, and all around the world, there's so many bad eggs out there, but it doesn't give people the right to assume and conclude and presume all those words to just mm -hmm. identify the law enforcement as all bad because there's people who've gone into law enforcement for the right reasons and made the right changes that their community needed to see and I think those people are the silent heroes that don't get spoken about a lot yeah and you're completely right um like you said it, it takes one bad egg and that goes for any profession. There's bad eggs in every single profession. There are bad doctors. We've seen true crime documentaries about bad doctors and things like yep. this. Um, that profession is just not highlighted. You know, they, those people are not being recorded doing stupid things or doing horrible things because again, they're human beings and they're not perfect. And yeah, there are some bad eggs who have no business having a gun or a badge, but the vast majority, there are hundreds of thousands of cops and the vast majority are doing it for the right reasons. Um, but to your earlier point too, it's like something that's really hard to turn off. So this is a job where you can, you know, 
a day in a cop's life can be like, oh, I'm just patrolling the streets, not much is happening. And then the next day they could be, you know, carrying a, like a lifeless body or a child out of a building. Like their, their profession, their job, I, I like, I need to emphasize that this is their job can go from zero to a hundred in, in the snap of a finger. And it can be hard to go home at the end of that day, especially when they have families and they have children. Um, so one of the things that, you know, I'm really hoping to accomplish with my community is to bring coping skills and coping mechanisms to these people, um, and to allow, you know, maybe a more seasoned cop to lend an ear or lend suggestions to a rookie cop or what have you so that it starts this cycle of properly coping with these horrific things that they deal with oh that sounds amazing that that's the direction that you're trying to go to because I was just going to ask like what do you you guys offer right now you know but that what the direction that you're going to is exactly the direction that cops in that in in just people in the law enforcement field they need to have that outlet you know just mm-hmm. so that they could have a safe space outside of their safe space, you know? And I guess I wanted to ask, how long has this really been going on for you? Like, how long have you been, um, like, when you started and from now, how long has it been? Um, So I got the idea in 2020, but I didn't really start actioning on it until, like, mid-2021. Um, and I've been kind of building it on and off. I'm also planning a wedding right now. So oh, congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Um, so this year has been kind of crazy, but um, yeah, it's been about a year, I guess, I would say. That's great. That's great. And do you, did you so far have like um people noticing and signing up and trying to be part of that community? And do you notice it's from like a certain area or so far across the United States? Um, so mostly in my area, I'm, I just moved to Philadelphia from New York city. So kind of in that realm, um, my dad, like you mentioned, my dad was a police officer. So I've got some people from, you know, my own community here kind of participating and, um, you know, kind of getting the word out there. Um, mostly I post on social media. Um, to again, spread the word a little bit more late last year, I actually hosted an event at a local gym, um, to raise awareness for, for, you know, my, um, my community and to raise money for, uh, my cousin was actually killed in the line of duty back when I was a baby. Um, and my uncle and father, um, started like a scholarship in his name. Uh, they run a scholarship in his name. Um, so we raised money for that. Again, we raised awareness for what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, there, there has definitely been a good bit of traction. Um, I recently started a podcast, but it is on hold right now. Again, lots yeah, going on. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's coming together slowly, but surely. And, and every, every day I really connect with another officer. I really see and hear about the importance and the need for what it is that I'm doing. So that just keeps me going. Oh, yeah. I talked to my sister about this conversation about how I'm going to speak with somebody who's doing this. And she's like, if they can give this out to every new hire so that they can feel at ease and not so much pressure, because one of the things that she said is that when pe- when new people get joined into the force, they feel like it's some stigma like the movies and and the and the TV shows have portrayed it to be and it's nothing like that and it's and it's totally different and she's seen that she's seen many people fail or mm-hmm. fall you know doing this because they don't have the right perspective going in or they don't know how to manage the zero to a hundred that happens in the job because she has told me some stories and some of them has broken my heart and other ones I'm like in disbelief. And then yeah. with the news, like out here where I live, um, I live in Milwaukee and that's in Wisconsin, like two hours away from Chicago. And mm. 
and for so for like a few years they would have random people shooting cops at like when they got pulled over and i know that was going on around the world but it's like it it brought it like it got me so scared for my sister when she would go out. Anytime I would hear the ambulance or hear the sirens, I would just automatically start praying and hoping that my sister's okay because you don't know. And it's sad that individuals who have a misperception, citizens who have a misperception on law enforcement, how they retaliate and they react due to somebody else's fear or their own fear. And it's scary to know that too many people are living off of fear instead of trying to step forward and have that understanding when they're dealing with somebody in law enforcement. You know, because when you when I get pulled over, I really t take into consideration everything. Like, okay, they're just doing their job. What did I do wrong? Oh yeah, I was speeding. You know what? It's my bad. Take with self responsibility. And I don't think a lot of people nowadays they have that self responsibility inside them, and that's when bigger problems happen, you know, and that's just in my opinion. What do you think? No, yeah, I completely agree. And and not that it's an excuse, but, you know, sometimes cops can be on edge. And if a citizen is go giving a cop some sass, the cop is likely to give it back. And again, it's not an excuse to use excessive force by any sense of the imagination. But you also have to take into consideration, like, what did this man or woman see yesterday? What what call is he or she coming off of? You know, like, like I said earlier, it can really go from a traffic stop to, you know, a dying child in the blink of an eye. And again, it doesn't excuse behaviors, but you really do as a citizen have to take into consideration, again, this is a job and this is a fellow human being who's performing this job. So like he or she is bound to have an emotional reaction to you giving him or her attitude or being rude or aggressive or what have you. Um, so even when it's like, again, it's not, you know, not to say that you can use excessive force, but like when you complain about a traffic stop that was unnecessary or what have you, like, again, like you said, take personal responsibility. If that cop was rude to you, in your opinion, think about maybe why, maybe there's an underlying factor. Um, how are you behaving towards that person? Again, it's a human to human interaction. So yeah. maybe you're mad, maybe your emotions are high, but just keep in mind that this is still a, a human being doing their job. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like those same individuals are not dealing with that personality back when it comes to going to a restaurant or going to a fast food place or going to run an errand or going to a store. If you give anybody else attitude, your end result is going to be attitude back, you know, and it just bothers me that people would say, oh, it's just a certain industry. It's not just an industry. It's a personality, in my opinion. You know what I mean? If your personality is prone to that type of reaction and behavior, always on the defense, always looking for an opportunity to to test someone's limit, you know, I feel like that's when it comes down to you need to have that self-reflection. And, you know, maybe you shouldn't go out for a while. <laughs> Put yourself on time out. <laughs> yeah, just go for a walk around the block or something. Settle down. Exactly, because it's not fair that we have to talk about this conversation and specifically focus on law enforcement, you know, because in reality, you can have this conversation in every field, in every field, because it's like you said, it's it's a job. It's a job that somebody signed up for, just like they would do at McDonald's, just like they would do as a lawyer or as anything else in this world. And I love the I love this I love this fact that you're trying to do a community and you're trying to give people, you know, this opportunity to talk about what they're going through in a safe environment that they know that they're not going to get judged by an outsider who doesn't understand the protocols, who doesn't understand the rules and regulations and the coding and and all of the police verbiage that gets, you know, scrambled up in society because we have this one perception. But in reality, when you're in the field and you're working the job, it's a totally different situation that, that you're dealing with you know and I, I I hope this goes really far because you know this is really needed this is this is needed so that people can 
really think about their actions moving forward. You know, they can read that senior um, officer's testimony or story or opinion, and they can reflect on it on themselves and then make the right move. And I think if more people think before they act in anything and everything, then our society and the world would actually be a lot better. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, you know, I'm doing this because... so. There are resources out there for cops. They can theoretically reach out to their supervisors. But, you know, with that comes the worry. You know, what are the other cops in my department are going to think? What's my supervisor going to think? Does he think I can't handle the job? Am I going to lose my badge? Like, there's a lot of concerns that go with going for help. Um, and, you know, having a community like this kind of allows for a detached perspective like hey i'm just looking for some advice or hey i'd love to chat with a seasoned police officer about x y and z whether it's something serious or something small or i i want to know how to get ahead in the in the you know department or whatever it is just getting that connection out there because there is a stigma it can be hard to ask for help and, you know, when it comes to any group of people, let alone a majority group of male people, it can be really hard to ask for help, whether it's serious help or whether it's professional help or whatever it is, it can be hard to ask for help. So my hope is that I can get people, you know, from small town, middle of nowhere who don't know where to go to advance in their career to big cities who have a lot of, you know, advice to offer. So that's really what I'm hoping to do. Um, and I think that it, it can really ultimately help a lot of people um, in this profession. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I and I truly thank you for doing this. And my sister thanks you as well, because she really does think this is an amazing thing that you're doing. And, you know, just hearing these um to these these testimonies I'm pretty sure it makes you feel like you're going in the right direction you know and I and I pray that you you continue to go forward in this direction because you know this is a positive movement you know you're you're literally creating ground where there's no ground you know and like you said there is resources but it's hard you know that stigma is real that stigma is really real oh, yeah. when it comes to men and men need to start to embrace themselves who they are and as they teach other people that may be around them to embrace their true selves, they need to do so as well. You know, it's always hard that it's always hard when you go into a job and you're so confident in yourself. But as soon as you walk into that job, you realize, you know what, you're not so confident because you feel like you have to be a certain way or portray a certain way mm -hmm. and act a certain way. And it's like, no, you can still be who you are, no matter where you are, no matter where you're working. It's just about knowing yourself, you know, and and I think this is a good way for men as well to get that positive reinforcement that they're looking for. And I guess to start wrapping up the show, what would be some great, great, great advice that you can possibly leave us off with? Honestly, when speaking to, you know, a civilian like myself, like you, it's really just to remember if you are interacting with police, whether you're being pulled over or they're just in line behind you at McDonald's, remember that they are just a human being. They are supporting themselves and likely their families with this job. They're hoping to make a difference and just look at them that way see them as a fellow human being um regardless of what your stance is on law enforcement in general that person in the uniform is just another person awesome thank you thank you so much for your time thank you so much for sharing your perspective thank and you. your movement. this has been such a great conversation i really didn't know how this was going to go you know i was kind of nervous <laughs> but i'm so glad that it came out so much better than what i expected because okay. i had such a great time talking to you me too this was amazing thank you so much for having me yeah you're very welcome and ladies and gentlemen if you want to if you're if you know somebody in the law enforcement or if you are yourself in the law enforcement you're just trying to figure out what this conversation was really about go check her out i have her lovely photo with the what with access to her website so that you can join and that you can 
find a community that you can feel safe in, that you can truly, truly feel safe in, because that's what we're all looking for is that safe area in our lives that we don't have to be scared in, you know, even if it's the smallest of questions, there's no such thing as dumb questions, in my opinion. <laughs> yes. Anything is off limits. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen, you guys be safe. And until next time, y'all. Bye.